Uh, what I want to do today is just give you an overview of what's going on in the South Coast, not only in the way of uh, health assessment, but also uh, what some of the things are that we're doing, particularly in the city of Fall River, to address the problems that we've identified. Uh, we could talk for the rest of the day about all the health problems there are here. Uh, there are lots of them. Uh, as there are across the country, we're not all that unique. Uh, but um, without your getting a better understanding of what you do to improve those, uh, the health status in any one area, uh, it's not of particular use. I don't want you to walk out of here just being discouraged and saying, you know, things are terrible and there's nothing we can do. There's a lot we can do, and we're, some of those things we're already doing. But with your help, we can do a lot more. Okay, so let's take a look here in the south coast of what the status of health is here in this community uh, and in particular what we can do to improve it. Um, how many of you saw this news article? It, was, it appeared on March 29th. Tracy did. Anybody else? Uh, it's in the Herald News. I'm, I'm sure you all read the Herald News the first thing you get up in the morning, right? Okay. <laughs> like everybody else. Um, the uh, article was based on a, a nationwide study that's done, uh, interestingly, by county uh, across the country. So there's a report for every single county in America, which is a good way to do comparisons county by county across the country. And largely because, unlike Massachusetts, most states organize their public health efforts by county. We're strange in Massachusetts. We have, you want to guess how many public health entities in this, this state? How many towns? 351, right. And we have a public health entity for every one of them. Uh, it's bizarre uh, because we have little towns that have a half-time person who is supposed to handle public health and mostly what they do is take care of the water quality and monitoring and things of that sort. Uh, and then we have large cities like Boston that has a huge uh, public health effort going on there with uh, over 100 employees, I believe. Uh, and they do an awful lot of very good things there. So you can see already there's a big discrepancy in terms of effort uh, to address public health issues uh, across the Commonwealth. And that's pretty much the case across the country. Some counties do a good job, others uh, not so much. So. Looking at Bristol County, uh, what do you notice? Are we in good shape? <laughs> Guess by the headline. <laughs> well, compared with the rest of the Commonwealth, we're in not such good shape. Uh, we're 13th out of 14 counties. Um, only Hamden County out in the west, uh, which is Holyoke and a few other towns there, is doing worse, a little worse, not a whole lot worse, but <coughs> statistically we're, we're kind of almost at the bottom. Okay. Uh, and if you look across Bristol County, you'll notice that there are differences town by town. Uh, where do you suppose most of the health problems uh, persist in Bristol County? Anybody want to take a quick guess at that? It's going to be in uh, Marion, Metapoiset, um, uh, where, where, where do you think? Fall River, New Bedford, and, and to some degree Taunton as well, the cities, okay? Uh, because, as we'll soon see, that's where uh, more of the health risk factors are located. But with this kind of assessment, we get a picture overall of health in the state compared with the rest of Massachusetts. In fact, what, how does Massachusetts rank nationally? Anybody heard that? Are we at the bottom? Toward the top. <laughs> Toward the top? Usually in the top five. Um, last year we were tied, uh, we were second to Hawaii. Okay, this year we're number one. Okay, so if you look at Bristol County and you say we're the wor almost the worst state health-wise uh, in the state, but the state is one of the best in the country, what you end up with is Fall River and New Bedford Taunton are kind of average for America, okay? And if you go to other states, I won't mention them, but they're in much warmer climates. 
uh, they do much worse health-wise. Okay? And the states that are in the bottom five are really experiencing the same kind of difficulties statewide that we see in some of the worst areas in our county. Um, furthermore, let me just say, within the whole the whole city of Fall River, are you likely to see what we call disparities, differences in health status from one place to another? Are we uniform or not? Anybody want to argue for the idea that you can live anywhere in Fall River and your health will be pretty much the same as everyone else? Is that the case? No, you're shaking your head, right? Um, there are sections, zip codes, if you will, census tracts in Fall River where the health status of that area of the city is about the same as the rest of the state as a whole. In other words, pretty good. And then there are parts of the city, zip codes and census tracts, where people's health is about as bad as it is in Mississippi, depending on what you're looking at, okay? So we call those disparities inequities, right? That there's a difference in your health status depending on where you live. Well, let's take a look at some of the detail of this. Um, on the South Coast, we have high rates of tobacco and substance abuse. You're going to hear more about opioids in particular, blood pressure, cholesterol, heart disease, heart attack. Read the list, okay, all the way down. Uh, we are good on uh, breast cancer, slightly better in Fall River than it is on, the, on average in the state, interestingly. But just everything else there on the list, we're near the top, okay? Not a good place to be, right? Unless you're applying for a grant. <laughs> we all know that if you're gonna apply for a grant to improve health, you wanna look as bad as you can. So we've been pretty successful on that. Yep. Does the breast cancer rate, the low rate, have any association with the fact that we've got South Coast Health, we've got some big anchor hospitals here that maybe are very proactive? And well, that doesn't determine the rate at which people acquire the disease. Okay. It, it does have a lot to do with how well, uh, how easily people can access treatment here. And I will say that the screening rates for breast cancer are higher here than they are in the rest of the state. So the hospitals, like St. Anne's, does a, a super job of getting people mammograms and other uh, 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 screening for cholesterol, blood pressure, et cetera. We do very well on that. So in a sense, we've got a sick population that's well doctored. <laughs> okay, <laughs> one way to put it. So, we have our challenges here on the south coast. Uh, we also have low levels of education, right? Uh, high unemployment. I love the way Fall River's unemployment rate is always half of whatever the state, or double whatever the state average is. Uh, you ever notice that? Okay, right now the state average is like three or four percent. Well, we're at seven or eight percent. <laughs> you know. Like 8.5. Pardon me? 8.5. 8.5. It's gone up in the last couple months, yeah. right? Uh, but we we kind of track that way. So no matter what, and even with Amazon open, you know, we're still seeing higher, much higher unemployment rates in this area. High numbers of homeless. You've probably seen reports of one sort or another. Those those rates tend to be much higher in the urban areas than they are in the towns. Um, Adults and children in poverty, always a consistent rate, we're in the low 20% or so. And that hasn't changed much in the time that I've been here. Um, and then the stress related to that economic status, try living on, you know, eighteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a year and see what, what your stress level is, okay? Um, and then immigration and language, I think, which are also stressors that impact health. Is there a relationship between these factors and some of the health status indicators you saw? You're not if you want to track uh, health status in area, any area, look at two factors, education and income. Okay. They, those always parallel. Okay. So as income or education rises, health improves. Uh, and all the other factors you talked about. What we often say in public health is place matters when it comes to health. Where you live, what your zip code is, will predict what your health outcomes are going to be, okay? And we talk about that. We call that environment social determinants of health, um, conditions in which people are born, grow, work, live, and age, and the forces that shape 
of the conditions of their life. Uh, those include economic policies and systems, development uh, agendas, social norms, social policies, and political systems, right? You're all involved in this, right? Aren't you? Leadership South Coast works on the social determinants of health, correct? Your job does something related to this. Am I wrong? Okay, I'm talking to the right group, right? Okay, uh, so you're involved in health because you're involved in the conditions that affect health in this community. Right? So looking a little more in depth on that, uh, everything from economic stability, uh, the physical environment, education, food, community and social context, and the healthcare system. Usually we, we talk about health, health status, people immediately think of doctors and hospitals. Well, public health doesn't, that's, that's like one, eight, it's 8% eight of what determines someone's health. The rest of it has to do with all these other factors here. Um, is it easy to control all of those? No, we wish, right? If we could change all those things and make improvements in every one of those factors. So let's begin by looking at all the groups on the South Coast who are working on this. First, both Fall River and New Bedford have a CHANA, or Department of Public Health designated organization, that works primarily on primary prevention. Voices for a Healthy South Coast works across all 13 communities. Mass and motion programs in each community address system and environment changes while community benefits committees of the two hospitals direct resources to specific programs. Finally, Groundwork South Coast is just getting off the ground in Fall River and New Bedford to look at environmental approaches to improving health. Chinaz in Fall River and New Bedford, as well as the two hospitals, conduct periodic needs assessments that help us understand where the major health concerns lie in all of the communities. Five-year action plans then focus on eight areas, diet and exercise, tobacco, alcohol and other drugs, infectious diseases, access to health care, education, employment, community safety, family support, and environment and infrastructure concerns. We then set about addressing problems through a variety of partnerships. In Fall River, we are well known across the state and the nation for the effectiveness of our collaborations. So let me briefly mention the major areas of our work in each of these. Reducing the use of tobacco through education, cessation, and reduced access to youth. Lowering alcohol and drug use through education, law enforcement, and drug take-back programs. Collaborations with police and social service agencies that have reduced young adult violence by 37%. Work with homeless families to help them maintain their health while they live in difficult environments. We are redesigning our environment to support walking and biking in the city of Fall River. We also collaborate with our schools to get more children walking. 100% of our schools participate twice a year in walk to school days and four elementary schools now operate walking school buses every day. We've also been operating a community-wide fitness challenge that gets hundreds of adults and thousands of children moving during the winter months. Having just completed our 10th year, we are now the longest running public challenge in the country. We put a lot of time into finding ways to encourage people to eat healthier food, including operating farmers markets, working with stores to provide healthier options, and teaching people how to cook basic nutritious meals on cable television and now on their smartphones. We spend a lot of time teaching people about sugar and its relationship to tooth decay, obesity, and diabetes, including programs in schools, parks, and at summer camp. We collaborate with state and city planners to design and construct better options for walking and biking. We also work with both small and large employers in our area to ensure that they make healthy options more available to their employees. And we collaborate with medical providers to make it easier for them to prescribe healthier lifestyle options as a routine part of their medical practice. So what do we expect from all of this effort? Lower crime, better parks, cleaner streets, improved education levels, healthier children, and more productive employees. 
We want to improve the self-image of Fall River residents, see health behaviors move in a positive direction, and see evidence that people are turning their lives around.